So good morning again. I am Reverend Alice Reed, and I'm happy to be with you here this morning. It's got a big week in front of us, and if um, you're looking for some support, uh, I encourage you to check out one of the ways that we can support you. We have a power of 8 a.m. call that happens, will happen Monday and Tuesday, and then we'll be done for 15 minutes of spiritual immersion. A uh, short little bit of time to get your day started. But there are two other options, opportunities for you. On election night, our very own Reverend Elijah will be doing a sacred hangout between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. And he's invited our entire congregation to join him for that. So there's going to be some more details in the announcements, but I wanted to let you know about these things. And then I have a colleague in Seattle who has invited CSLs from around the nation to join her for a, a day of vigil, vigil and practice. And so they will be in a Zoom room from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And you can join at any time. There's a new facilitator on the hour. And so that's another way that if you're feeling a little um, anxious or nervous, that you can get some spiritual support um, during uh, what I think will be, people will be getting a lot of very excited about. So consider those ways of being grounded because there's a confluence of energy happening right now on the planet as well as in our nation. We have a, a full moon. We have the, um, it's All Saints Day. The next, this next 24, 48 hours is the Day of the Dead when you we're calling in those that have uh, made their transition and daylight savings time has ended so there's a whole shift in energy there and there's something else going on. Uh, uh, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, there's a pretty major election that has been highly charged. So. You know, if, if we agree that all life is energy manifesting itself over and over again, we've got quite a casserole going on of energy right now, don't we? And so those, those little respites that I offer you, I encourage you to consider using one of those over the next couple of days so that you can stay grounded and centered. This month we are looking at living a compassionate life as a conduit for that energy. And we're going to try to weave this theme into the current events. And so um, today I want to look at how we access our personal power for the greater good. One of the pinnacles of our philosophy is that there is a consistency to spiritual laws, that they consistently show up in the same way, and that it, when we're conscious of them, we can use them for our, not only our personal good, but for greater good. We work with the law of attraction, that what we think about comes about. The law of circulation, where we are always, whatever we're putting out into the universe is what comes back to us. And then the law of correspondence talks about the, the nature of what we put out and how that co comes back to us and how that's reflected to us. And these are all subtle nuances of what you might call cause and effect, right? We're really talking about how we work with cause, which is, of course, the divine, and how that divine influx moves into our experience or the effect. And so like many faith traditions, We've focused over the last hundred years with personal transformation, with that individual healing and that individual connection with the divine. And yet, of late, there's been an evolution that's happening, not only in our tradition, but in other traditions. You've probably noticed that the um, some of the other faith leaders who are speaking publicly, that they sound a little different these days, that they, they might be talking more about uh, wholeness, more about unity, more about this idea that there is a power that, that we can utilize and, and connect with, and that it is time for us to use that personal power that we have spent many years honing 
for global transformation. It's time. You don't need to look very far to hear the call for transformation. And it's not showing up lovely. <laughs> it's showing up messy. And it's showing up through challenges. And it's showing up through divisiveness. But I absolutely am certain that all of this mess, what I'm calling the shift show that's out there, <laughs> is really the opportunity for us, the opportunity for us to step in and to use all the, the personal healing, the personal transformation that we have used, to play, where we've become more grounded, where we've become more connected, and it's time to use that and walk it out in the world. And I can't think of a better day than All Saints Day to call in all the resources that we have to really walk out this spiritual philosophy as a way of life and as a way to actually interact with each other in the world. And so I'm calling in my favorite mystics and sages and spirits today. I'm looking at my even those activists that have passed on. Because humanity is transforming and it's happening quickly and it's happening in real time. No longer is it enough for us to claim uh, our own personal good, but it's time for us to actually step out and claim what Richard Rohr likes to call a um, public virtue public virtue. When I was reading his post today, he talked about how in his training as a Franciscan monk, he was uh, told by his teachers, um, and I quote, to try to make it as easy as possible for all others to love you. <laughs> and I resonate with this idea. I want to create this wide path of love that people feel comfortable with, but at the same time, I think we have to look at things in the reverse, that instead of making it as easy as possible for others to love me, it's time for me to make it as easy as possible to love you, no matter who you are, so that I can have this open heart, so that I can be that place where love shows up, so that I can work with those spiritual laws of correspondence and circulation, and when I can get beyond myself, right? When I can get over myself is another way you might want to put it. When I can get over myself, when I can begin to see the bigger picture, then I can begin to work with what I would call true power, which is the power with, as opposed to the power over. In our society, a lot of the struggle and strife that we're seeing is about this this idea that we have to get power over things, power over the people who don't think like us, power over the problems. We've got to muscle through it. We've got to use our force. But there's this other idea, this other relationship you can have with power that is more like a power with. If you can just imagine the image that comes to mind is like a, a river that's flowing freely and, and the current is strong and we can work with that current and begin to understand the power with that wants to move through us. And that's the, this next evolution, if you will, with our spiritual practice is to begin to understand our power and then to begin to know how to use it so that we can use it with effortlessness, that there's a power that moves through us as us and by us, and that we can invite that power into ourselves, and we can allow it to help guide us. And, it, and while I know that anger and um, you know, taking a stand for what's not right, all those things are really important, I don't think that that energy, and I've said this before, is sustainable. It might get you off the dime. It might get you out of your seat. It might get you willing to take some action of some kind, but the next step is to then pull in and pause 
so that you can be in communion, if you will. I know that's a charged word for some, but <laughs> you can be in connection with a power that wants to move through you. And so one of my favorite sages, who's still alive, so I don't need to call him in just yet, <laughs> is Reverend Lloyd Strom. And he wrote a wonderful essay called The Great Race of Life, and I want to read a couple of exper- excerpts from it to you. He talks about ev- ev- the evolution in consciousness, and he starts by saying that the, um, as we evolve in consciousness, the motivations behind our likes and dislikes rise up to take on a transpersonal nature and expand to include others. Consequently, we begin to like those things that bring peace and joy in our lives and into the lives of others. And additionally, we dislike those things that bring us pain and suffering and cause other people the same discomfort. So he's really, while that may seem pretty obvious to you, Lloyd is really beginning to look at this motivation behind the things that we do and the reasons for us to take action. But he goes on to say that regardless of our motivation, pursuing our likes and avoiding our dislikes can only provide us with temporary relief from an eternal longing, which is to feel the ultimate bliss of the divine. Since it's written that God is love, it follows that what we are truly seeking is love. And in all our likes and dislikes, we're merely keeping us bound to a fleeting series of carnal substitutes for love. And so he's talking again about this idea that we get so connected to the effects, the things, the, the, the the stuff that has to change, the stuff that we need to stay the same. We get so connected with those things that we become disconnected from what's underneath those likes and dislikes, which is our love. And that it is the love that we need to pay attention to because the the likes and the dislikes and and the comings and goings of what's going on in the world, they're fleeting. Yes, this is an important election. But then there'll be another important election. There'll be another... Uh, crisis, there'll be another something that needs us to pay attention to it. And I'm not saying we shouldn't pay attention to it, but I'm saying we should ground ourselves in this overriding idea that we are here to manifest love. And that love will show up when we can hold that highest cause and then allow our passion to be moved through the alchemy of love so that we are doing good, so that we are beginning to step into this place of public virtue. And I, and I love that idea of public virtue because it reminds me that while there are things that are really important to me that I hold close to my heart, there's a greater good that wants to come forward. That the essence of a... Of a, of a I would say a pure political process, is how can we be in service to one another as we create this system to manage our well-being? And what is the greatest good? And how can we be in power with this public virtue? How can we raise up our consciousness and our minds to think about what is the highest and the best that that there might be something that's important to me, Alice. I know the things that I care about personally, but what are the things that are going to serve the the greatest number of people? And I think it's easy to lose um, sight of that. We begin to get very attached to the things that are important to us. And I could, you know, there are virtues on both sides of the political aisle. And if we could manage to bring our attention to those virtues as opposed to our opinions, then we might find more common ground. We might find where we can do some negotiation. We might find some, oh, heaven forbid, collaboration. (laughs) It doesn't happen when I draw a line in the sand and I tell you how different you are 
You may be different, you may have different ideas, but there's a common thread, and that common thread that we're looking to pull from is the greater good. And so I think there are a number of saints and sages that have demonstrated this to us over the ages. And so I wanna call some of them in this morning to shepherd us through these next couple of days. And then I'm gonna invite you to call in any that I might not have mentioned in your own heart and we'll do a little spiritual practice. The first sage or saint that comes to mind for me is Mother Teresa. So I call in Mother Teresa who understood the power of love and compassion to care for those who could not care for themselves. I call in the Buddha who understood that suffering was temporary and that enlightenment was permanent. I call in Saint Teresa of Avila, who despite living in the 15th century in deep religious oppression, strived to teach each individual that she came across that God, the power and the presence of God lived within us and not outside of us. I call in Gandhi, who believed we could change the world through peaceful, nonviolent means. And I call in Martin Luther King Jr., who worked to liberate black Americans and all those that were oppressed or victimized through systemic racism. And I call in Jesus of Nazareth, the historical Jesus who loved God so much that he loved and lifted up the downtrodden, the poor and the sick, and knew that, knew that they too were one with God. One of Jesus' hardest teachings was to love our enemies. And so as we call in these saints and sages, what I'm gonna invite you to do is to really bless those that think differently than you. Bless those that might be in that other party whatever that other party is for you. And what if we held them in wholeness and integrity and the divine goodness of God over the next coming days and did that love our enemies so that we could know greater oneness? So this is where our, there, may be, there may be somebody who's passed on that you look up to, a saint or a sage. And so I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes to place your hands on your heart and to call in whoever it is that you look up to that can shepherd us through these next couple of days. And we pause. And so each of these saints and sages that have been mentioned, those that you have called in in consciousness, I know that these individuals help us to walk out these next couple of days, to know that there is power and presence that moves in as and through each one of us. That what we're doing right now, this evolution of humanity, has been happening forever, has been happening for an eternity. And so it'll continue to happen through us as we move through this election season. Allow yourself to be that conduit for compassion and for love. And know that there is indeed a power for good in the universe, greater than you, and that you can use it through your choices. And that's how we give God a choice today. Thank you very much.
Let's go ahead and, um, and pray. And so we take the energy that we created through this idea of calling in the saints and sages and knowing that there is wisdom that is always available to each and every one. And I know that as we move through these next few days, that we allow ourselves to be those compassionate conduits, that we stand in truth, that we allow the authenticity of who and what we've come here to do to move through us, to give God that expression as only we can. And so I know for each one that we are indeed a beautiful conduit of power and that we allow ourselves to be present with this highest good that we, while we may be paying attention to the effects of the day as we watch these next few days unfold, we also hold it lightly. We hold it so that it does not overtake us. Instead, we hold it so that we can infuse it with the love and the wisdom and the power of the ages, that we continue to call in these sages to walk, help us walk out these next few days. I trust this power and I trust this presence and I give great thanks for it and so it is. <laughs>